Today, we are starting out getting ready to plant our late season patch of cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, all that kind of stuff. And so what we're starting out with this morning here is getting the water tanks filled, getting the plants ready, watered, getting them pulled out of their packs. So that way, hopefully in about two or three hours, we can head down to the field and start putting them into the ground. The only problem is that today we are actually supposed to get some rain. And so we're trying to beat that. And so the first step to the whole process is gonna be getting this water out of this tank and into this tank. This one's a little bit bigger and we only need one tank. So this one's a little bit easier to maneuver being that it has four wheels and doesn't need to be propped up like this one does since it only has two wheels. I got the transfer process started. This tank only has a little garden hose end coming out of it because we use this pump to suck the water out of there and put it right into our transplanters, which are over there. This guy has a two inch line, which we have a bigger pump that we pump it in as well. It's a lot faster process, but we only have one pump. And when we have a water tank at each end of the field, we need two different setups. So that's why we have this. But regardless, we're pumping it out of here and into here. The process actually goes pretty fast because this pump works pretty fast. I don't exactly know how many gallon per minute it is, but it's quite a bit. I'm thinking in about 10 minutes, I should be done. And I can start filling this tank then the rest of the way up, all the way to 400 gallon. And it's empty. This isn't just plain water in these tanks. We add some fertilizer to it just to give the plants a jump start as soon as they get into the ground. And so what I'm gonna do now is basically just cut the fertilizer in half because we had it just around 200 gallons and we're gonna fill it up to 400 gallons. We always add some hot water to the fertilizer before putting it in the tank. That way it mixes up better. Then I'll stir it in real good. While the water tank was filling, brought the 420 up, got it hooked up to the planter. This is what we're gonna be using. Got it greased. We always grease it almost every single time before we do a big planting. That way nothing wears out and it runs properly. How it works is this is the tank. This is where we set our plants. This is where mom and dad will be sitting. This right here is where we'll put our plant in and we'll follow it back through and you'll see when we're going along but this thing will then shoot out water each time we put that plant in there watering the plant and then putting it right into the ground and then i'll just be on the tractor right here driving straight out through and we'll just keep going row after row after row until the whole field is full or until we run out of plants and so now that's what i'm going to do is go get those plants watered and then take them down to the field this is the plants right here like i said all sorts of varieties we have multiple different varieties of each plant. Like we don't just grow one variety of cabbage. We grow like three or four. And the same goes on for broccoli and uh, cauliflower. In the greenhouse, we obviously have nothing growing besides the weeds that are coming up in the holes throughout. And I heard or seen somewhere that this plant and every single other that's coming up in here is actually edible. I know absolutely nothing about it, but that's why I wanted to check with you guys and see if any of you guys watching have seen this or have even eaten it. I want to know what you do with it, how you cook it, and if it's any good. So let me know down in the comments. We never want to put dry plants into the ground. So mom's going to water these. And then we're going to pull them down to the field. My Uncle Rick's starting to pull right now because that wagon's already finished up, watered. What? Come here. Come here. Days. Good girl. The guys went out this morning and got three baskets of eggplant, two Cuban, six Bell, and two Italian L. Really nice eggplant. They really blew up after we got them watered that second time. 
and so did the Cuban L's because they weren't ready last time I picked either. And the Italian L are just as nice too. You can almost see a clear difference of one that is fully mature, just like in the color. It's not as like wrinkly. I don't know how to explain it. But when they get fully mature, they'll get a nice hard shell on them. When they're not, they'll be a little bit like squishier and be like wrinkly. We're just pulling everything to the field right now. That's the field right there we're gonna be planting in. Uncle Rick's pulling. I got the planter, dad's got the water tank, and mom's got the guys to help pull plants. Lily and Daisy were like mousing around in the hedgerow and must have got into a skunk because Lily's down there rolling her face and it reeks like skunk. But luckily, Daisy did not. She's just fine. Maybe she knew better, I don't really know. Mom's putting plants in both of their trays so we can start again. We just finished all of the cabbage, ending with the red cabbage, and now we're gonna start with broccoli. Uh, okay, so we're not done with cabbage. She didn't know I guess we had any savoy left Which is a curly leaf. It's like a sweeter leaf. Really? She went swimming in a mud puddle to try and get the scent off her I guess or the smell Her eyes look fine I've never seen her that wet and muddy Usually it's Daisy. Lunch break. Oh boy, we gotta have fun. Barbecue. That's not only barbecue. What? That's just regular barbecue. No, there's two little ones here. It looks like Daisy put on a pair of pants. You smelled the food, didn't you? Lily's the same way, you just can't tell. Mom had to run up to the house, so while she does that, we're gonna pull some plants just to get a little bit ahead. Dad's down adjusting the spacing on the planter right now. 
to finish up the field. We are just about done We're on our last row. This is what it looks like. Doesn't look like much, obviously. We've been planning now for a couple hours and because it's just so dry and in this hot sun, the plants are starting to wilt, which is just fine. That's normal because we did put water on them right before going into the ground. So they'll be okay if we don't get rain for even a couple days. But ideally, if we could get rain as soon as possible, that would be even better. I don't even know how many rows. There's six and there's 12 here in the middle. That's 18. And then we're gonna have another seven rows down below. So like 25 rows and then two drive roads. To finish up the day, I'm gonna put these bell peppers and eggplant through. That way they can sit in the cooler all night and cool down. We finally got some rain and not just a little, I think we got over an inch. I didn't even check the rain gauge because today is Wednesday and we're heading off to market today and we gotta get the truck loaded. Mom's up by our house in the tomatoes, getting some green tomatoes. Dad went to the market to do a water sample for the farm market. And so I'm out here right now. I'm starting off with collards. Usually we rubber band these, but because I'm by myself, that's not gonna be able to happen. So I'm just gonna tuck them right in there and try and get as many as possible. So now I'm on to basil. I don't even know how I'm supposed to cut this off, to be quite honest. Did you check the corn? No. So I guess we're gonna leave it out. We don't have time. What time is it?
So we just finished loading. We got one tray of cauliflower, cabbage, only a couple heads of broccoli. Back there is all peppers and eggplant and pickles. This is a whole skit of tomatoes and beans. Then kale, kohlrabi, collard greens, and like eight or seven crates of corn, something like that. Which this is a new patch, so it's gonna be really nice, young and tender. Dad's just leaving for market. Me and mom are obviously staying home. She is gonna start packing a load for the farm market. She's going in the cooler right now. And I'm heading back out to the field to get some more sweet corn for her table. Just like the upper patch, about 20 yards up there, the animals are getting this as well, which was expected. The other animal that was here was just peeling back the husk and then just eating it right on the stalk, just like you see here. But now it seems like something new, it could be the same animal, I don't really know, is actually breaking the whole ear off and dragging it away. We're seeing that majorly, even like halfway out through the field, ways away from the woods. So I don't really know what it is. I assume it's coon, could be deer too, could be, I don't know if it's skunks. I don't know what it is, but they are wreaking havoc on this corn patch pretty bad. But they still did leave some nice ears for us, which was nice of them. Oh, Dace. Good morning. Gave her a bath last night and now she's gonna get muddy and wet again. Just gonna have to probably travel a little bit further to get the amount that I'm looking for. This right here, where it's just got some holes in the tip, that's crows or blackbirds could be. These ears are big and beautiful. This one's actually no good. Mom just left for the market. Daisy and I are heading into the barn. We're gonna feed the cows. We put these boards over our cart. That way the birds can't get in here and eat it. Which it looks like I need to get more down. When my dad grinds feed, he does it in the top of the barn, and puts it in what we call our chop room, and then there's a chute here, so I can just open this up, drop it down right into our cart, and fill it up. This barn used to be filled with cows, like every one of these stalls was cows, and the pens was cows, and so that's why we had a cart. They would just push that around everywhere and feed everything. Cows are ready and waiting. Every time I come out to the farm market, first thing I always gotta do is check out the zinnias. Now that we finally got some rain, they're really taking off. Seems like they grew a bunch. Hopefully people come and cut some more. I can see a bunch where people cut, but I mean, we would need a couple hundred customers to cut all these zinnias. Even the bees are loving them. 
They're doing great.